In the modern period, when we think of a soldier, we think of the uniform. And it is this uniform that makes him distinct from the rest of the population. Now, when we read about ancient Indian military history, one question which can be asked is whether ancient Indian soldiers also wore uniform or not. So in this video, we will talk about this and our investigation will begin with the Vedic period. So we all know that most of our information about the Vedic period comes from the Vedic sources or the Vedic literature as we call it. Now in the Vedic literature, it does not appear that there existed a concept of uniform. But what is clear is that the warriors had some type of dress which made him distinct from the rest of the population. So it appears that the warriors used to wear deer skin. And apart from this, we have referenced that they wore armor and had different types of weapons that made him distinct from the rest of the population. Although it is quite hard for us to say whether the different kingdoms or the different tribes of the Vedic period had their distinct uniform or distinct dress that made him unique is not certain. But what appears to be the case that there is a reference which suggests that some type of people in the Vedic period wore a distinct color of turban that made him unique or they, that signified that this person belonged to a particular group. Although this reference is a single reference, but it does point to a fact that there was this concept. Now, when we move to the period of the epics or when we talk about the epics, particularly Mahabharata, we get some concrete information. So there is this term that appears in Mahabharata, which is Sangram Sajja. So this Sangram Sajja would suggest that this term meant a military costume or sometimes we can say a battle gear. So this term could mean either of these two meanings. Now, what is important about this term is that we are told that after wearing Sangram Sajja, soldiers used to go in battle. So this is an important reference which could suggest that this was a type of uniform. Another important detail concerning uniform comes from an episode involving Abhimanyu. And we are told that Abhimanyu when he was fighting with thousands of Rajputras, so these Rajputras were uniformly dressed in red garments. So the fact that these Rajputras were dressed in red garments suggest that there was a concept of uniform that existed during the Mahabharat battle. Although it is quite certain that these type of dress were not worn throughout the battle, but it appears that for a, a mission or for a particular assignment, a particular type of dress was worn. So this is quite certain. Now, when we move to the dress of senior commanders, we get some interesting details. So for example, we have the example of Bhishma. So Bhishma, we are told, used to wear a bright white dress. And the term which is used is also interesting. The term is Shuklavasaha. So this is the dress which Bhishma used to wear. And apart from this, we are told that during the Mahabharat, senior commanders wore a dress that involved different types of items and these were distinct items. So for example, we have the turban, which is called Ushanisha. Then we have the upper garment, which is called Uttariya. Then we have the lower garment, which is called Antariya. And then we have the body armor, which is called Varma. So these are the special items which in Mahabharat senior commanders used to wear. Now, when we talk about the Mahajanpat period and particularly the period when Alexander invaded India, we get some interesting details. And particularly, we are talking about the sources that are not Indian sources. So basically, these are the classical sources that talks about Alexander's campaign in the Indian subcontinent. And the evidence which we get from these sources can be classified into two groups. So the first type of information which we get tell us that Indian soldiers used to wear skins. So for example, we have the famous kingdom of Sibai or Shibi. 
that was situated on the confluence of Jhelum and Chenab. And when Alexander fought with this kingdom, we are told that the soldiers of this kingdom wore skins. So this is the first type of example which we get from these sources. The second type of example which we get from these non-Indian sources is that Indian soldiers used to wear bright white cotton garments. So this is the type of detail which we get from these non-Indian sources. Now when we talk about the postmodern period, we find that a distinct dress has evolved and this was mainly because of the fact that there is a huge influx of foreigners. So we are talking about the Scythians and then the Kushanas. And what we find is that a type of coat was worn by the soldiers and especially we are talking about the Kushan soldiers. We can also see in the sculptures of Kushan kings that this type of coat was quite famous. Now it could be argued that it is this type of dress that made the Kushan soldiers distinct from the Indian soldiers. So we could think of this dress as a type of uniform. But what is not entirely clear is that whether the Indian soldiers of the Kushan Empire or the Indian soldiers of Indian kingdoms that were not conquered by the Kushanas also wore this type of dress or not. Now when we move to the Gupta period, we find that the Gupta emperor is shown wearing a type of coat. And this according to some scholars was because of the influence of the Kushan period. But the question here remains is that whether the Gupta soldiers also wore a type of coat is not entirely clear. And we have also no reference to suggest that the Gupta army or the Gupta soldiers wore a special type of uniform. Now when we move to the post Gupta period, we have a concrete reference in the form of Bana's Harscharitra. And in Bana's Harscharitra, we are told that soldiers used to wear bright color garments and also distinct color turbans. And interestingly, we are also told that the colors of shields was also different. Now, it is not entirely clear in Bana's Harscharitra whether he is talking about the colors that belonged to different kingdoms or not. Now, when we move to a different type of source, particularly we are talking about the Puranas, we get some interesting information concerning uniform. In the Matsya Puran, we are told about the battle between the Daivas or gods and the Daityas or demons. And we are told that these demons wore blue dress, whereas the Devas wore white or black dress. So this is an interesting detail which we get. Then when we talk about the Brahman Puran, we are told that the general of the Daitya wore a dark colored turban. So this is an interesting detail. Now when we talk about the Bhagavad Puran, we are told that when the Daityas and the Devas were fighting, it is their upper garment and their turban particularly the color of these two items that made them distinct from each other. So this is a faint reference to the fact that a type of uniform also existed. Now it is quite hard for us to say whether the Puranas which are describing these details are talking about which period. So because of this, it is quite hard for us to say from which period these Puranas are getting their inspiration. Now from all of these information, what we can say is that there existed a notion of uniform in ancient India. But the problem which we have is this. We do not have enough information to suggest how prevalent this notion of uniform was in ancient India. Now if you want to know more about ancient Indian military history, please watch this playlist. Thank you for watching.